For many these days, a small car can no longer be, well, just a small car. If growing families are to consider modern miniature transport, it must be a good deal more versatile. A good deal like Citroen C3 Picasso, in fact. If you want an MPV, then talk to Citroen. At least, that would be a good place to start. The French brand has an almost bewildering array of the things, from uh, utilitarian van-based models like the second-generation Berlingo Multispace, built to withstand the attentions of the most destructive brood, to large comfy seven-seaters like the C4 Grand Picasso, or the even bigger C8, with interiors that contort into more positions than a Romanian gymnast. What the French brand didn't have for many years, however, was a uh, super mini uh, based MPV, something like this C3 Picasso. You'd be forgiven for not knowing that such things exist, or if you did, for wondering how such a concept might be possible within the restricted dimensions of such a small package. The answer is that such cars may not be able to seat any more people than a conventional Fiesta-sized super mini, but they can seat five people far more comfortably and with much greater levels of versatility. Now, cars like Nissan's Note and Renault's Modus have been doing pretty well in this growing market sector in recent years, selling for considerably less than the kind of money you'd need to pay for a, a Focus family hatchback-sized small MPV like, say, Citroen's own five-seat C4 Picasso. The C3 Picasso neatly plugs that gap in the French maker's lineup. With this kind of car, the driving experience is likely to be unremarkable, but the traveling experience can often feel rather unique. Yes, so the, uh, the steering's a little light until higher speeds firm it up, the long throw gearbox isn't the slickest you'll come across, and of course it rolls a bit on really tight corners, but those aren't the things that you'll remember after a drive in this Citroen. No, the things that really stick in your mind are the things that are really important on this class of car. The things that make it a pleasure to drive when you're engaged in the boring things of life, like uh, nipping down to the shops or picking the kids up from school. Let me give you a few examples on this. Apart from perhaps the digital speedometer, probably the first thing that you'll notice uh, when getting behind the wheel is the exceptionally light and airy cabin, courtesy of one of the largest glazed areas in the segment with up to four and a half square meters of glass used around the sides and the top of the car if you've opted for the panoramic glass roof. Then there's uh, that high set seating position, which uh, along with the uh, very uh, flexible range of steering wheel and seat height adjustment gives you a commanding view of the road ahead. And what about the three-piece panoramic windscreen with its slim pillars that makes urban driving so much easier? courtesy of an unusually wide side vision angle at 29 and a half degrees, easily the best in the segment. Good maneuverability and uh, a tight turning circle are a boon in town centre driving too, and the vertical rear end makes parking uh, very simple and straightforward. Uh, it also glides over poor services in true Citroen style too, so you can feel rather smug as you watch fellow road users crash from one pothole to another. The range is mainly built around either 95 brake horsepower 1.4 or 120 brake horsepower 1.6 litre petrol units or uh, a couple of 1.6 litre HDI diesels developing either 90 or 110 brake horsepower. Um, if you're going to be uh, carrying people on a regular basis or venturing on the odd uh, long journey, I'd probably avoid the entry level petrol 1.4, but otherwise the engines are a pretty willing bunch. With uh, the um, 90 brake horsepower 1.6 litre diesel feeling a lot more willing than its rest to 60 time of 14.7 seconds would suggest. Refinement at higher speeds could be a little better thanks to a bit of wind noise around the windscreen and on the petrol models to the lack of a six-speed gearbox. But uh, normally, in most conditions, it's fine and it's certainly much better than that of the uh, larger Berlinga Multispace model that Citroen will sell you for similar money. MPVs need lots of interior space, which necessitates boxy exterior dimensions. 
Now, there isn't really any getting away from this, but a, an astute designer can uh, disguise the fact that his car is the shape of a garden shed. This C3 Picasso manages that trick with some style. Yes, it's a box, but the rounded edges and the circular detailing successfully disguise the fact. More importantly, it's, uh, more di it's difficult to think of a better car than this one to um, sum up the uh, small on the outside, big on the inside philosophy that so many small car buyers are looking for. So it's uh, really no longer than, uh, than a standard uh, compact super mini and shorter than some of its direct rivals so it can fit into the tightest parking space. But it has a broader cabin at 1.7 meters wide than any of them. Here's a car that makes the most of every millimetre of its bulk and incorporates all the lessons that Citroen's learned over the years about MPV ownership. Slip into the cabin here and you'll enjoy a 1.66 metre long space and uh, that makes this car uh, not only the biggest in its class inside but also a rival for some compact MPVs in the sector above. Now what that means is that with the front seat set for a, say a six footer to drive there's still plenty of knee room for someone to sit behind them here in the back. At the same time, there's more headroom than anyone bar the ludicrously tall would ever need. It's all enough to make an equivalent super mini feel ridiculously cramped. In addition to either increased boot volume or um, increased uh, rear leg room, you can individually move the split folding rear seat forward or backwards. Elbow room is class leading and even with the, the seat moved right forward there's plentiful knee room as well. There's even a quality finish to the interior thanks to the use of soft touch plastics around the cabin. And storage capacity? Well if this 385 litre boot isn't big enough just slide the rear seats forward to increase it to 500 litres. That's bigger than you get in an executive saloon like a BMW 5 Series and yet you're still keeping all your passenger space. If you don't need the passenger space and you want more room still then one easy hand movement enables you to fold these seats flat to create a 1,506 litre completely flat luggage area. Now that's already 150 litres more than a direct rival like Renault's Grand Modus can offer. But if you still need more space, then uh, perhaps you need to tick the box for the uh, optional fold flat front passenger seat, which uh, can enable you to carry really long items like surfboards or bicycles in a 2.41 meter load length. Now, you've also got a very versatile area in the boot at the back here with a removable load floor, which can be positioned at either of two loading heights plus cubby holes and storage spots are everywhere on plusher models even at the rear passenger's feet and there are the usual careful touches like this glove box on uh, air condition models that though not very big does enable your chocolate and your uh, uh, drinks to be kept cool and also allow a bit extra to uh, um, go for some nice uh, optional touches like the aircraft style trays that fit in the seat backs to keep rear seat passengers busy. They even have pen holders and lights. And uh, the extra child rear view mirror that uh, attaches on the standard one so that you can keep an eye on the fights and tantrums in the back without taking your eyes off the road. List prices suggest that you'll probably pay somewhere between 12 and 16,000 pounds for your Citroen C3 Picasso. And that pitches it at about uh, 500 pounds model for model more than the Citroen C3 Super Mini that it's based on. Let's see how that stacks up as a value proposition. Direct rivals include the equivalently priced but less versatile Renault Grand Modus. Uh, but you'd need to find a 1,500 pounds premium to own this car over the model that leads the super mini MPV segment in the UK, that's Nissan's Note. Still, budget permitting, and assuming you get the right deal, you'd choose this smarter and more versatile French model every time. You'd probably also prefer one over an apparently larger uh, compact five-seat MPV from the next class up, something like, say, a Renault Scenic or a Citroen's own five-seat C4 Picasso. 
As to why, well, uh, if we take the C4 Picasso five seat as an example, it costs between seven and 1400 pounds more, depending on the variant you choose, yet offers you no more boot space. For that, you'd need something like Citroen's Bellingo Multispace, which costs about the same as a C3 Picasso, but is, well, more van-like. But if it makes a strong case for itself uh, alongside other compact MPVs, this car's proposition is of course completely compelling when you put it up against a conventional super mini, unless say Lewis Hamilton driving experience really is high on your list of small car buying priorities. Now, whether you order your C3 Picasso with 1.4 or 1.6 litre power, or go for the 1.6 litre HDI diesel in its various power outputs, that's the engine that I've got here, if you compare your choice to uh, an equivalently powered and an equivalently specified conventional super mini, like say a Vauxhall Corsa or a Ford Fiesta, you should find that you're looking at a saving of around 500 pounds, and that's for a much more versatile car. And this Citroen has a reasonable kit list, which includes things like uh, front electric windows, power mirrors, remote locking, a CD stereo, and anti-lock brakes. Unfortunately, you have to graduate up to plusher models for things like side airbags and the potentially life-saving ESP stability control system that helps you out if you're on slippery surfaces or if you enter a corner too fast. You won't need to take out a second mortgage to run a C3 Picasso, especially if you opt for one of the HDI diesel models, both of which should see you on the right side of 50 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. Uh, CO2 emissions uh, for both vary between 125 and 130 grams per kilometre of CO2, but that figure will drop to just under 160 grams per kilometre if you opt for one of the petrol models. Insurance groupings range between three and five, and there's a three year, 60,000 mile warranty. Residual value should be better than any small Citroen in living memory, and um, you'll certainly do a lot better than you would have done if you'd bought a conventional Citroen C3 Super Mini. Now Citroen may not have been the first to produce a versatile uh, MPV version of a conventional Super Mini, but they were the first to really get on top of the market and do the job properly with an appealing blend of practicality and style. Certainly many will be attracted by this car's young bubbly image. More importantly, at a time when families are often looking for excuses to downsize from larger cars, this C3 Picasso stands as a genuinely more sensible alternative to five seat compact MPVs in the class above. A, uh, a small MPV then, for people who normally either wouldn't want or couldn't afford one, that's about the size of it.